Hi, it's Anthony Samroff here, international therapist and life coach. I was told to try doing these horizontally, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm going to teach you how to improve your communication skills today, how to become a better conversationalist, and I'm going to do it in about five minutes. That's all it's going to take you. Well, actually, I've got an exercise for you to try, so that you will have to do maybe after the um, video. So a really important thing to get comfortable with doing is talking about what you're passionate about. A lot of people do not like to be in the spotlight. As soon as the camera turns on to them, they feel self-conscious. And it's not just introverted people. Introverted people are good at becoming good listeners to combat the fact that they are self-conscious about talking about themselves. But here, the thing is that a lot of people who are very extroverted overcompensate for the fact that they don't like being in the spotlight by uh, talking really fast and, um, well, basically with their, uh, they, they compensate for their shyness by their uh, extroversion, by filling in spaces and um, sometimes they're really desperate to be heard and if the if they get a sense that people's attention spans going, they start to speed up and, and uh, try and fill in all the space. So it's important to learn to speak in a slow and measured way. And, you know, it's if you're curious, you'll never be at a loss for conversation because you can ask people questions. But if all you do is ask people questions, then a lot of the time it starts to look like, uh, sound like an interview. And it also doesn't show that you're a... Um, you're confident or interested, uh, it doesn't show any of your qualities, it makes you look like an inaccessible person or a, or a dark horse. You know, if you give, if you make declarative statements, then what you're doing is that you're essentially taking a risk, you're putting yourself on the line, you're saying something about yourself, um, you're demonstrating your values, you're, you can challenge people, they can be challenged by what you have to say. So it's a very charismatic thing to do, to be able to speak passionately about yourself. And I'm gonna teach you how to do that if you have difficulties. If you think this might help other people, please pump that share button. I know a lot of people don't like sharing self-help media because they feel self-conscious, but I promise you, no one will mind. And also, you never know, you might, you might, people, people might appreciate um, this, this video. And, and whoa, you can open you up to new kinds of conversations if you take the risk of sharing media that's about personal development. So let me just check to see if I've got anything in my notes that I've missed. Um, okay, so I just wanna, we'll start, I'm gonna give you an exercise at the end, but uh, first of all, just speaking passionately about things. So for example, I could say um, something like, one thing I'm really passionate about uh, and fascinated by is how people communicate with each other and listen or, or don't, you know, and why, and, and do they listen well or badly, and why do people get into conflicts? I'm really interested in why people get into conflicts and how they can resolve them better and come closer together uh, uh, or be more authentic in their relationships and how they can hold space for each other to become more authentic in the relationships. So supposing I went out and practiced saying that to six or 12 people, I come to the point where I felt really confident saying that. It's not, che it's not cheating, it's not inauthentic to practice speaking about something you're really passionate about if you're shy, because you know, I don't know if you've ever learned an instrument or learned to stitch or sew or um, any skill, you have to do it slowly at first and you need to do it very deliberately and think about what you're doing. But the more you do it, the more automatic it becomes. So if this is something that's a problem for you, there's nothing wrong with sitting down and writing a statement such as such as I just delivered. And you know, if, if I prepared that statement, I would say it a lot more calmly and charismatically than I said it there. So one thing, one thing obviously I'd like you to do is sit down after this video and go, what am I really passionate about? And sit down and write a 30 or 50 word statement about one of your passions and then go out and practice talking to that 
uh, about it to six people, six people you know. And there's more to this exercise afterwards, so stay tuned and share the video. I could say, you know, I love to learn. And uh, here's another way, you know, because I'm talking about how when you just ask questions, it can turn, the conversation can turn into an interview, uh, but you can actually, uh, or sometimes people say, I don't know. You know, you say, well, what are you really passionate about? And people will say, I don't know. But if you can answer the question and give them some context, that will help psych them up to be able to answer that question in a meaningful way as well. So supposing I wanted to say, what are you passionate about? I could become a much more interesting conversationalist if I said it this way. So I'd say, I love to learn what excites a person and really gets them going. I enjoy get going on personal development workshops and retreats and I meet the most interesting people and I know I never know what I'm going to learn about myself and I love feeling the connection that I get from being through a poor process of self-discovery and personal development with other people who are on a similar journey to me. So how about you? What is one of your passions? And you could tell that if you were going to ask someone a question and you were able to give a florid and passionate response the way that to contextualize the question the way that I have, that would definitely feel, help people feel comfortable, like they knew you, like you were confident, like you knew your own mind and you had interesting things to talk about. And that if the conversation ever went dead at any point, they could come back to the passions and say, so tell me some of the retreats that you've gone on, for example. Now, and by the way, nothing is geeky. If you speak passionately about loving the Incredible Hulk and you can tell people why you like that and why it's so exciting to you and, and why it's fun, it's not geeky. You know, if you work in IT consultancy and someone says, oh, well, that sounds a bit boring. Are you, you know, do you live in your mum's basement or something? You, you, you know, you can say, well, actually, it's the attic. The, the internet connection's better up up there. But no, seriously, I, I love it because people always come to me with problems and I love being able to, to fix the problems. It's always interesting. It's always challenging. And then boom, you like working those, with those computers. All of a sudden being an IT consultant isn't so geeky after all. So here is your exercise. If you want to become an exquisite conversationalist, and I, I know what I'm talking about because even though clearly I like talking a lot, I um I I often felt like the the weight of the spotlight when it fell on me and I was one of these people that ended up speaking at a million miles per hour at times uh, in case um people's attention spans ran out. So, I'd like you to think about these questions and wind the video back and write them down. What is the craziest thing that you've ever done in your life? What is the most fun that you've ever had? What's your guilty pleasure? Is there anything that you love that you would be afraid to admit that you love? What would be your idea of a perfect day? If you could do anything you want for a whole day, what would you do in the morning, afternoon, evening? What would you eat? Where would you go? What would you do? Who would you be with? Would you just be on your own? Write a detailed account of that. What would make someone stand out and be irresistible to you? Especially, well, someone of the ob opposite sex it could be, or you could just talk about the kind of people that you'd really love to be a companion with. And this is something you should answer every week, before, especially if you're going out. What is the most interesting or unexpected thing that happened to you this week? Take a note of it. Make sure that you can talk about it passionately so that when you meet people, you've got something to talk about. Now, the point of these, answering these questions, going back, wind it back, write down the questions, and actually take, you know, 15 minutes to half an hour to sit down and answer all six of them. You can go out and speak to these about people, or when you meet up with your friends, your established friends for coffee, you can practice with them and talk about these things and you will become a more interesting conversationalist. You will become a more confident person. And also, 
you can use them as context the way it's de de uh, described. Uh, if you get talking to someone new, you can go, wow, the craziest thing that I, I've ever done is this. How about yourself? Have you ever done anything crazy? And they'll have to go, mm, I'll have to think about it. Mm. So I would really appreciate it if you share this video because when I share them, it looks a little bit like spam. So if you're on any groups on Facebook, please just grab the video and share it in one or two groups. I would really love to help as many people as possible. And here's another thing that you should definitely know. On my YouTube channel, there is a whole playlist of videos on improving your communication skills and your relationship skills, improving your relationships. So if you type Anthony Samroth into YouTube, you will get a whole playlist of great videos on improving your social skills. If you want my help personally, you can email me at anthony at beyourselfandloveit.com and I hope to see you soon for another live feed.